About a year and a half ago, I taught myself how to pick locks. I did it out of necessity. I actually needed to get inside of an automatic coffee machine that was doing a shitty job of brewing the coffee. The internal temperature was set too low for safety reasons and it was annoying to my coworkers. Since then, I've taught about a dozen people to pick locks. And lock picking basics are actually very simple, but I've noticed the same sorts of problems coming up over and over again. And I also remember all the misconceptions that I had about picking locks before I started. So I wanted to clear those things up. First thing I wanted to clear up is what I would call the Hollywood lock pick. You're trying to pick a lock and, and you just go in and out and in and out. This is just a lack of basic knowledge and it's nothing to be ashamed of. I had this misconception myself as a kid. Think about this. If you take a key and you put it in a lock and you pull it in and out, in and out, in and out, nothing happens. And the reason why is because a lock is opened by applying torque to the cylinder. So the first misconception I want to clear up is that there is no lock picking without being able to apply torque. And most lock picking torque is achieved with something called a tension wrench. Now, tension wrench sounds really magical, but this is just a piece of strip steel from a windshield wiper. Now, do you need to run out and get yourself a windshield wiper in order to become a lock picker? Absolutely not. You can find metal tines from a street sweeper on the road. Uh, you can go to a hobby shop where they sell pieces to make model airplanes and buy stuff like this. Or you can even grind uh, a wrench shape out of a feeler gauge, which is available at any automotive store. In all seriousness, the thickness of this is not critical. The length of it just needs to be long enough for your finger to get over on it. And it, it should be springy if you can help it, but you can use non-springy things as well. In fact, you can use a bobby pin for a tension wrench. The important thing about the tension wrench is that it applies that rotation to the cylinder. You can see that cylinder rotating. Without that rotation, you're never gonna make this lock open. And you can see it here too on this practice lock that if I put the tension wrench here in the cylinder that I can get this little bit of rotation on the lock. And that's the fundamental thing you need to start picking. So this, the second thing I wanted to address was that when I had you know, found all these lock picking guides online, the famous MIT guide to lock picking, which by the way is not as good as the no bullshit guide to lock picking. I, I was very hung up about how perfect were these shapes. Like if I print them on my printer, are they a little too small? Or are they a little too big? Will they not work? As though picks had some kind of sacred dimensionality that made them very special. And in fact, these three picks, which are called standard hooks, are pretty much all the same thing. I mean, they vary a little bit in their tip geometry, they're made, all three of these are made from slightly different materials. But ultimately, the size, shape, length, and angle of these things is not very critical. Essentially, you need something with a little bit of a lifted end so that the shape is like that. And the reason for that is because you're going to push up on the pins with it. So the second misconception I want to clear up is that, that there's anything really special about these tool shapes. They don't need to be perfect. They don't need to be exactly the right size. You just need a little finger that you can put inside the lock and push on individual pins. And depending on the lock, you may have to change the tool to, to actually make these pins move. So don't get too hung up on the exact size and shape of your picks. And don't worry about buying expensive picks either. In my experience for learning, the very cheapest picks will do. And in fact, homemade stuff works just about as well. I do think there's value in buying one pre-made set of picks, if only just to get a feeling for the right size and shape. I'm going to pick this practice lock to show something I often see from beginner pickers when I'm teaching them. They go in and they can, they can feel the pins moving up and down, like you can see these ones moving up and down, and they think that the goal of picking is to jam all the pick, all the pins, all the way up. So they'll go in and they'll work really hard to get all the pins stuck in the upward position. And if they feel any down, that they feel like they haven't gotten it yet. But what you can see is if they take that approach, some of the pins end up above the shear line. I'm not going to address uh, the shear line, the cylinder, the torque, the pins. All those things are really well addressed in the videos of Bosnian Bill, the lock picking lawyer, and a whole bunch of other people on YouTube, which I'll link below. The important thing to know is it's not about getting the pins all the way up. 
In fact, it's just about getting the pins to pop just above the shear line and to make a little click. There was one. I'm gonna reset it. I don't know if you heard that, I'm gonna try it again. That was a pin being set right there. So you're just looking for a little click when the pin pops over the shear line and that's it. It's not about getting the pins all the way up, it's about getting them to the right place. Just about anyone can pick one of these locks and I think that's a great thing. Also, just about anyone can pick one of these locks and I think maybe that's less of a great thing. But what you learn after going from this to something like this to maybe some, this is a cheesy lock from Harbor Freight that actually has a plastic cylinder. When you go through all these different kinds of locks, what you learn is that each lock is a unique snowflake. You don't know how to pick locks. You actually learn how to pick individual locks first and then you learn how to generalize those techniques over lots of locks. Now I'd like to share the method that I've been using to teach all of my friends and coworkers, when I had coworkers, how to pick locks. And it centers around this Chinese made practice lock. These practice locks are incredibly easy to pick. And some people would say that, that's, that they're not a good place to start for that reason, that you won't learn anything. But what I found is that showing somebody that they can pick one of these, maybe even on their first try, is a great way to build a ton of confidence and to develop a sense of feeling for the pins so that they get excited and move on to the next thing. So step one in Vice Chief's four-step plan to learn how to pick locks is buy a practice lock. And there are many styles and sizes of these. I love these padlock ones. I've given away half a dozen of these things. They're great. So I'm gonna put the tension wrench in the cylinder, see that I can rotate the cylinder just a little bit. And I'm just gonna lightly rest my finger here. Now, how hard do you push? I'm pushing just hard enough that if I pull my finger away, there's a dent in my skin. I'm not pushing real hard here. This is pretty gentle, just enough to feel this bind up. And now I'm gonna pick this, this practice lock. And that's it, that's all there is to it. I moved some of these pins up to the shear line and it popped open. And now, of course, the next thing you'll want to do is do it again because it feels great. The moment when that lock opens is this great confidence booster. So I'm just going to go in and push on the pins. And I might have a false set here, but I'm just going to keep going. Okay, if you can't get it on the second try, just release. Let all those pins go back to their main position and then try it again. I've got one more. And there it is. Now this is a very, very easy lock, but it's also very, very satisfying. You get a lot of feedback from it. You can even look at what you're doing and you quickly get to a point where you can open this thing in seconds. I haven't touched this one in years, which is why that took me, you know, all of 20 seconds to open. The next thing I recommend is getting a, a master lock. Master locks are known for being relatively easy to pick, but they present a much bigger challenge than a lock like this. I highly recommend starting with a brand new lock. The reason being, if your lock is old or gummy or filled up with sand or whatever, been sitting outside for 20 years, it might be extremely difficult or impossible to pick and it's just gonna frustrate you. You're not gonna learn from it. The idea is to learn from it and to get better and better at developing the feeling of feeling the pins click and hearing the pins click. Okay, so let's look at how easy it is to pick a master lock. I just randomly picked one of these three tools. These are all pretty good tools. I'm gonna go in and set the pins. And there we go. I think that was maybe 10 seconds to set that master lock. This is one of their highest security models. Obviously, it's not very high security against picking, but you can see how you can quickly build confidence setting and resetting and learning a lock like this lock. And uh, there we go. You can hear it lock back into place. 
The next thing that I do in, in my progression of lock picking is I moved on to better tools. So I actually don't recommend that you start with homemade tools unless you have to. Buying a very basic set of picks is really worthwhile and I like them that are fairly, I like picks that are fairly thin. But this is not a bad place to start if you have that practice lock. We can see if we can, if it can be done with these tools. So there we go with some homemade tools. Um, but what I recommend is moving on to better and better or more and different tools. So this is like a very inexpensive lock pick set that used to be on Amazon. It's no longer. The metal is uh, very short. It's chromed. It's kind of thick, which means that it won't work for some locks. This is one that I really love. This is from my very first set. And actually, I sanded these surfaces to make them smoother and less gritty. And then I put heat shrink tubing on it because after a while, the metal handle was cutting into my fingers. And eventually, I got these very nice locks from Banggood or AliExpress or something like that, which have smooth handles with great feedback. They're thin, they're light. And likewise, with the tension wrench, it, over time, I've ended up with tons of different lock picking tools. And in truth, I, I use probably these, this one, this one, this one, and this little pile the most for my single pin picking. But that's another step is just to move on to better tools. Now there are different mindsets. There's a community who, are, who teach these things online and they're, they're fantastic. They're called the lock sport community. But they ridicule master locks and they're constantly moving further and further up the chain into higher and higher security locks. It's, it's kind of fantastic to watch. I mean, these people can pick a lock that's been engineered with all kinds of tricks, but for the times in your life when you're likely to actually need lock picking, like you lost the key to something that you own, or your friend has something that they bought at an auction and they wanna get the lock off, whatever the case, you don't need to keep moving up and up and up into fancier and fancier locks and developing more and more and more outrageous skills. The best thing that I can recommend to you is just to try a few different types of locks. Like try your pr practice lock, try your master lock. This lock um, is an interesting one to me because the cylinder is actually made of plastic. This is a lock sold at Harbor Freight. So it gives a very different feeling of feedback when you're, when you're picking it. And in fact, I find it rather challenging to pick because it's kinda, kinda mushy, for lack of a better word. So just try out a bunch of different locks and then maybe try you know, dirty locks, try old used locks, try house door locks, try file cabinet locks. You can try all these different kinds of locks rather than trying to pick an Abus or an American or some other lock that's very, very high security. Train yourself on just a few different varieties of locks and that will make you a great lock picker.